You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building, and I'm so happy. Is I'm not really, happy. Is he really a special guest? <laughs> now, yes. when I hear the word special guest, I feel like I'm on the back of a yellow bus, but that's not the case. <laughs> no. But I'd like to start by saying, say, hey, Pumani Pajaseo. What's For that all mean? the Korean people out there, that means Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Say, hey, Pumani Pajaseo. Gong hei fa choi. For other Chinese people out there, that means Happy New Year. Okay, but we wasn't talking about those Chinese. <laughs> we were talking about the Korean Chinese. Will I get in trouble for saying that? I don't know. Korean people Austin's are not father Chinese. is here. That's Austin's right. dad. Oh, Donnell, wrong. Yo, Donnell By the tried way. to play us on the gram, too, when he posted that uh, picture of us as Nicki Minaj on the paper yeah, magazine cover. I didn't post that picture. Somebody gave it to me. And it was Liar. my duty. Liar. It was my duty. But I will duty. say, everybody said you looked like you could get it in that picture. They did, they did. I'm not going to lie. They did. I, 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 I was like this. I was getting oh, that. Yeah, you got you got a good look. Shout out to Bearded Humor. Always coming through with some funny stuff. Yeah, that. shout out to your other Instagram page that we know is you, Bearded but you humor. won't admit that it's you. Who? Bearded, Bearded humor. humor. No, that's not me. That's the dude that worked for me. Oh, same dude. Yeah, 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 okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, same yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, But I have to take the time to say uh, that, uh, you know, that my brother said, my brother uh, said, Happy New Year to you, Charlotte. Happy New Year to your you, brother. Your brother's gay? My brother. Is, that's not we the important that. part that of it. It doesn't even matter. I mean, yeah. yeah, but my brother said that he don't fuck with him like that. Okay. But if he can get an autograph uh, autograph of his book, and he also said your eyebrows were cute. That's Thank what you. he said. You so. know why I like your brother, man? Because he liked me when I was ugly, man. When I had skin discoloration. <laughs> Yo, what'd you say? What fat? you mean when? What you mean when? <laughs> <laughs> when did you get cute? Yo, hold on, son. Who you been? Yo, he looked me right in my face. Real light skin and said when, I was waiting for you to agree with me. Yo, my nigga, you did get cute, my nigga. Yo, don't let this get to you, son. Yo, don't do it, son. Yo, Photoshop, get this shit out of here, son. Yo, I can't. And you said that. And he bit, yo, and he bit his shoulders and leaned in it like this, too, man. Wow. Yo. Yo, I can't believe you tried to pull that one, son. Now, Nelly's here. <laughs> now, you know, um, Austin's dad is here. I told somebody I would take them, uh, to dinner for free, uh, a lady and her fiance, me and my wife, are taking out. And I'm so happy Thank Donnell you. is in town because I don't have to pay now. We're just going to go see mean? Donnell Friday. Donnell's free. Donnell's free. Well, now, yeah. wait a minute sure. now. What, what? DL Hughley in town Friday, too. You're right. I think it's around the same time. Nah, wait, wait, wait. I, I, know. Know. I got two shows. <laughs> <laughs> I got two shows. Y'all can catch me earlier. Do y'all go to Barclay after yeah, so, that? So we gonna see who we Donnell or, or, or DL. What time is your show, is Donnell? I didn't see Donnell 7 30, so much, uh, man. Seven thirty. You only see me one time. That is man. not true. You only see me one time. I seen you at Caroline's. I saw you at Radio City. I'm gonna tell y'all something. That's twice. All jokes aside. But you was going to see Dave Chappelle. You wasn't going to see Donnell. No, I, I was happy to see that. I'm gonna tell you something, and I'm, I'm dead serious when okay. I say this. Donnell was absolutely the funniest person on the stage that night, and that's saying a lot. Dave is great. Okay. Dave is great. Donnell is incredible on that stage, bro. Mm -hmm. His new material is really, really good. I appreciate good. that. And Donnell's one of the best stand-up comics in the country. FYI. He should be mentioned no, with the I, Chappelle's Don, in Donnell the Rocks. Donnell has been incredible, though. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, but he's really... I mean, he, no, you, no, I've been incredible, been and he's been disrespectful for so many years. <laughs> <laughs> I asked him one time why you didn't come to my show. He told me, I seen your stuff on YouTube. <laughs> like, I'm like, YouTube is not the same <laughs> as live. And I will say, like, I, I, I'm not, not that I was trying to impress you, but when you came to the show, I was like... All that disrespectful stuff that he do to me mm -hmm. on the breakfast club, we about to stop that right now. <laughs> right now. And he looked at me like, it was so disrespectful. It was a compliment and disrespectful at the same time. He said, yo, you funny. I'm like, where the fuck you been? No, no, no. Listen, I always knew Donnell was funny. But I'm just saying, on that night, I can honestly see what everything has gone to another level. And I appreciate it. Like, I feel like you, Chappelle, Rock, like, all of y'all should be mentioned in like the same realm. I appreciate that. I mean, I I, I love work. the Radio City Music Hall gig. It was dope because I got to work with some of the dopest names in comedy. But the thing that I felt good about with, with that said and everybody else on a certain level, that I on every show, I held my own. So be to be mentioned in those same names, and people acknowledge what I've been doing for years, you know, I, I really appreciate it. Well, let's have a drink for that. All right. He kills it. Yeah, I just found out that uh, Can you this hand is me the my first book back, please? This is a... Your book. <laughs> he threw on the floor. That shit bounced like a basketball. Yo. <laughs> Where'd it go? It's gone. It bounced. It landed on your fine side, son. Yeah. You still... I can't believe that. I can't believe that he looked me by face and said... When no, I we, we got to have a toast for Donnell because I found out uh -oh. that these charges against you might be getting dropped. What, what charges? DUI charges? What, DUI? I don't... No, and he's not... You're not driving, right? No, I'm not driving. I okay, quit after that check. went down the wrong road. First of all, what charges, ye? No, this was the incident I had. He beat somebody up. 
He didn't even hit the person. It's yo, yo, no, this, yo is a, Envy, this is a different Envy, one. Envy, oh. don't disrespect oh, okay. me like that, son. <laughs> you don't always got to hit. First thing you got to do is swing, son. Yeah, swing. If you were the dude that's not going to swing, then you with the wrong person. Donnell got a mean swing, though. Yeah, he does. We seen him swing. Yeah. We never seen him connect, but he got a mean <laughs> that's swing. Yo, and I laughed, my last swing, it felt like I was uh, like a figure skater. I spit around, I was doing like a 360. <laughs> but it's, it was, this happened over the summer when we were doing a Ready City Music Hall gig. And the guy was har harassing Dave. Yeah, the, not just harassing. It's one thing to ask somebody for a picture, but it's another thing to ask somebody for a picture with your junk in your hand in the bathroom. You know, this so dude Dave was peeing. Yeah, Dave, well, Dave was in the bathroom. And dude wanted to take a picture. They was like, we, we, you can't do that. It's disrespectful. Then we went outside, and this is one of them dudes. You know how some dudes are just waiting for an opportunity to yeah. build up their social following and everything? And dude follows outside, and then he just tried to force us into his 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 story. You know what I'm saying? He was one of them dudes like, yo, I'm out here, y'all. Blah, 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 this and that. And um, I, that night, I, I was under, not under the influence, but I... Um, <laughs> I had dabbled. A few adult beverages. You know, I, I, I had a, a couple of adult beverages, and then um, I just didn't feel good about it. The dude was uh, violating our, our space, and um, and I, I took a swing. I didn't land, but, you know, I did swing. So and, there were charges against you? No, they were, they were, they were, they, they said Donnell wanted for questioning. How, how am I wanted when I'm doing 15 shows at Radio City Music Hall? All you do is show up there. Mm -hmm. But I thought it was just, it was just a BS case, and then mm -hmm. it looks like it's going to finally be thrown out. But I, but when it happened, I talked to Dave after it happened. I was like, Dave, I don't want to be a liability to you and your company. Whatever. I said, I apologize for that. I don't want, you don't want to be around nobody that's right. going to cost you money. And I told him, I said, I apologize. And he looked at me. He said, Donnell, you know, uh, you know, things happen. He said, you know, dude probably had something coming to him. He said, the worst thing to do can do is sue me. I can afford it. I said, Dave, that's what I'm here to talk to you about. <laughs> <laughs> I can't afford no lawsuits. Did he, did he hold you down? Huh? We never got to that point, but I'm sure that if it would have went to of going to court or whatever, he would have held me down. But it was all BS, and it's, it's washed, it's it's over. But I feel like that I'm on TMZ so much, it's like episodes of TMZ. Yeah, you're on there a lot. I had to find, a, find out the hard way that it's never a good idea to have adult beverages and talk to the TMZ cameras. Oh, oh yeah, you yeah, said some I very remember weird, that. weird things. I'm I remember That didn't come back to haunt you, though. Well, and well, How? Because you was saying some things that were like, if I remember correctly, were very homophobic. and No, you got me with the wrong person. No, you still mad about the ugly comment, right? <laughs> that was, that was the dirty joint. Like, yo, I'll feed, I'll feed, I'll shoot fire with fire. I'll just make up something. You know how the media is. <laughs> I remember seeing that story. That was, I was that, that was dirty as hell, right? <laughs> For no. everybody that didn't see it, like, really? I don't like him. No, the last is I was in LA. I was coming out, and I was coming drunk out. Drunk as hell. We can play I the clip. I wasn't drunk. I was. I was. I was. I was. On drugs. I was lit, and I was, <laughs> I was coming lit. out of a lit environment. Everybody was lit, and I walked outside, and TMZ rolled. You know how hard it is to get sober in two seconds. <laughs> TMZ rolled up on it. It was like Donnell. You ever hear your name where you try to think of everything you did in the last six months? <laughs> I was like, Nah, I wasn't even on Instagram that day, right? And it was like Donnell, and they kept coming toward. It's like, How do you feel about? Do you think Harvey Weinstein would ever work in Hollywood again? And then you blame and the me, victims. I didn't blame the victim. That's the slant. That was a clickbait. I said, No. I meant yes. And it was like, Why do you say that? I was like, Because he's a Stein. Right, and they was like, what do you mean me? But I was like, Jew Tan Clan ain't nothing to fuck with, right? <laughs> oh anti-Semitic. Yo, oh that's not anti-Semitic. Like you, let it Donald. go. <laughs> let it go. <laughs> no, but they took everything I they took the things I said out of context. And Charlamagne, you and I had talked about it, because I needed somebody that's in radio to have some knowledge of the situation, mm -hmm. the whole thing's going down. And I asked you, how do you feel about the whole Me Too situation? Right. You feel sympathetic toward the situation. But at the same time, this is the, the part that people are avoiding, that with, uh, with all these cases and these situations, there's no due process. Absolutely. There's no due process. And somebody says, so you think three women could just get together and just falsely accuse in Hollywood? I really believe that. Well, it wasn't three women with Harvey Weinstein. No, I'm not saying what Harvey Weinstein. But I'm, I'm going to read what TMZ said about you. Oh, uh -oh. she don't even want to go there. She just me too, me in a different direction. Yeah, no, boy. <laughs> All right. Here's but the headline. Time's up. That's what, what she told say? you. Time's Here's the headline. Donnell Rawlings look, look, I'm nervous. I'm on like, Weinstein. <laughs> Most women were fine with his sexual aggression. No, that's... See, no, can, this I, is, can I read the article? Go ahead. Oh, boy. But say who read that part. Who said that part? This is the headline. Okay, go ahead. 
Harvey Weinstein actually had a good track record sexually harassing women because most didn't complain. So says Donnell Ross. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead, continue. We got an inebriated Donnell Monday night outside the inebriated. Peppermint Club. <laughs> That's white folks. <laughs> drunk as shit. Drunk as fuck. <laughs> and like a ruler, nigga. <laughs> at his peril, saying 29 women complained, but 1,000 didn't have a problem with him. But wait, there's more. He also says Harvey's career in Hollywood is far from over, but his reason is pretty anti-Semitic. The good news? Donnell says he's down to collab on one condition. Let's just say no massages below the belt. No, I mean, I will tell no, 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 anybody, anybody that's reading that be like, what the hell's going on? Jeez. And this is what I said. We saw the video, Donnell. No, you said video. You can play it. This is what I said. Ladies, I said this. Hollywood, 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 Hollywood entertainment. Women, if you plan on being in this business, you have to understand that 90% of the men that you come in contact are going to be fouled, they're going to be dogs, and they're going to try to take advantage of you. It's your job to negate and rebuke all of that. And you hear so many stories like, well, I was fearful for my job. I didn't want to, I, um, I was worried about my career. But at some point, it's going to have to be a situation where it's a, a moral decision over financial, a, a, a financial um, decision. And I said, be smart. And this is what I said. No, no, you ain't saying nothing. No, That's yes, what you I thought did. you yes, said. No, you read, was drunk. go. The, g- re, the, look at the video tape. I said, <laughs> y'all the ones got me drinking up here. I said, <laughs> yes, I did. I did. I don't understand. I'm a lightweight. I said, be smart. And everybody said, what do you mean? I was like, if a man, listen, if a man flies you cross country, say East Coast to the West Coast, not from DC to New York, but cross country. First class, <laughs> you get to the you get to the airport. You go down the escalator, and it's the little dude with the sign with your name on it. Cause women love to see their names or anything. Girl, that's my name right there. You get in the SUV, you go to one of the dopest suites you ever seen in your life. You walk in, it's chocolate, it's candies, it's strawberries, and it's a man sitting there with his dick out. Somebody is going to pay for that trip. Be smart, stay all woke, and don't blaming. put in your. It's not victim blame. You can contain it. You contain it all you want, <laughs> but I'm just saying, be smart. And if all possible, try not to put yourself in a position where a man could take advantage of you, and and and, and use. But you it know, for a lot of these thing. women are young and naive, and certain things that happen, be like, oh, I want you to read the script, right? You know, and the, they'll have the assistant come down, who's a woman, I understand, and then bring you up to the room, and then leave you in the room. No, Angela, yeah, let me explain something to you. Nobody ever does a script reading in a personal, private room. And this is what I'm saying. This is my warning but to women. But if you're young and you're not aware of that, you okay. Well, works, if you're right. young, you're not aware of that. Okay, maybe this what I'm saying is a lesson to the young women. Mm-hmm. Don't get caught up in the BS. If you're not, make sure you are always in a surround. How about where somebody men don't the, do that? Yeah, this is a lesson yeah, to men. Stop that. victim blaming. This is a lesson to men. No, I, you know what? You can you can do this all you want. You can say lesson to men all you want, and men can be stupid as all they want to be. But at some point. Women have to be educated on how how to be smarter. Smarter. This is not victim blaming. I'm saying this is in addition to men checking themselves out of this whole I situation. Agree with that. I agree with out that. of this whole situation, the best thing is men are checking themselves. Donna, yes. have you ever There's been in, in a compromising position yourself? Yes, and I got me too myself. A guy so tried you? No, it was a chick. When I used to have a regular job, it was a um, it's a, it was a woman that I used to work for. Let's just say she's a little hard on the eyes. All right. Okay. She was heavy. Where were you whatever. working? Huh? Where were you working? Um, this was way early '90s, a long, long, long time like ago. Like in DC somewhere. Yeah, DC but somewhere. But where though? Well, I'm not gonna give that up because then I would tell who it is. She's still there. She's still there. I, you know what? I didn't fuck with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it. What I'm saying was, at that point, I was making two dollars an hour, and she gave me an opportunity to make fifteen dollars an hour. And when I came in that room, guess who had a five dollar raise? That was me. Hey, I've been me three too, man. Yeah. You know, so again, again, mm-hmm. like you know, I'm not, I'm not victim. What is it? Victim shaming. Victim blaming. Victim blaming. blaming anything like that. I'm just saying, as 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 men, as men need to check themselves and be better and don't take advantage of situations. Women also, if you if you combine that, being smarter and educating men to be better, then it'll it'll affect some type of change. You know the best part about the whole Donnell Rollins, Harvey Weinstein situation, the side-by-side pictures that they would do. <laughs> <laughs> Who looks like the predator in this Yo, picture? he do, oh, son. No, 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 I don't look I like don't the predator, know, bro. Nah, he I don't know. Like, I mean, you look at that face, and that face has to be a person that has some power and fame. Not, <laughs> it's certain things you look like. Yeah, you're gonna have a hard time. You better, you better get your bank up. Get some M's in that bank account. Now you make up fun of a lot of people on Instagram. Uh huh. Now how did you feel when Michael Blackson was making fun of Kevin Hart? Um, I I, I had I, I've, I've been asked this question before, and my issue was that 
it was that I've seen both of these guys come up from nothing. I, at one point, we were all doing like $50 spots. And you build a certain type of camaraderie and friendship with certain people. Mm -hmm. To my understanding, Michael Blackson and Kevin were really good friends. And I had an issue with Michael Blackson going in on Kevin when Kevin was at a dark point in his life and things weren't going well. Word. It's one it's one thing for you to, like, when things happen in the, com in the comedians, like, first off, comedians are the most sensitive people you're ever going to meet. Mm -hmm. People say, why comedians can't take jokes? Because we give them all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's one thing for you to go through something and you know the internet's going to hear you. Hit you. Kevin knew the internet was gonna come for him, but when you look at your crew, and you never would think your man's is gonna go for you. Right. So that's where the people didn't understand. That's what Kevin was saying. Kevin wasn't bitch. He was like, "Yo, you supposed to be my boy." Loyalty. You know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. it's 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 a sense of loyalty. And why are you gonna kick? That's your dude. We all go through stuff. Where at the time we all got a joke. Right. When you and this is not to put you out there, or whatever. But when you had an incident when when you got when the guys tried to attack you mm -hmm. in front of the joint. You know what I'm saying? Like. You would have, like, you knew people was gonna have jokes. Mm -hmm. But if your man say wax, would have had jokes. You was like, I thought you was my man. And you told Wax when, did have jokes. Yeah. Wax yeah. called me immediately and was like, nigga, do some push ups. Yeah, but but that, that, right. No, 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 right. he called you. Okay, true. Right. true That's true. what I'm saying. Yeah, he yeah, called yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And another thing he said, son, I'm rocking with you forever because this shit ain't gonna never happen again. Yeah, true, true. You know true. what I'm saying? So, like, we always gonna hit inside jokes. But when it comes from your family, you know what I'm saying? I That's agree. a little bit more, more more painful. And then at the same time, you know, and I understand when 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 Kevin was talking about the IG model. When you we get to the point now where if you're doing everything for followers and just for reaction, and when it comes to your friends, you can't do that. And I've heard people. I I, I was on Mike's page and everything, and then people try to question who's the funniest and all this shit. And that's always been around a lot of people. And this is what I know about Kevin Hart, knowing him for years, and for a person that has had as much success as he had in the industry. Normally, you see a brother get that much success, you start, black people start fading away from him. Right. You don't see no brothers around. You don't see mans around. And one mm -hmm. thing I can say, and I've told Kevin about this, the dopest thing is that when you see Kevin, his team, I know it's still white people around, but he has, he employs a lot of black people, not just because they mans, but they qualify. Mm -hmm. And them same so, dudes that been with him forever. Forever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They all living good. So when me, when I gauge stuff, I look at everything. And, you know? and, and then just being a man, I can't clown another man for cheating. Right. Because we mean. all have. Yes. Hmm? Dad, you never cheated. <laughs> yeah, you right. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't never cheated. Go, I ain't never cheated. I like how Gary Owen handled it when he was up here, and he just said, "Oh, when it happened, yeah, I sent him a text, but then I also, you know, I felt bad, but then I also said, where's the money you owe me?'" To who, and Kevin? That, yeah, but I think like that's fine. That's funny. It's not. Yeah, like but it's all it's like like even Chappelle on his special. He said, if you're out in this business long enough, you'll get Kevin Harted. Mm -hmm. That's a little light little joint. But then Mike just went on and on and on Still going. and on and on. And it don't it just it just don't make no sense. You know what I'm saying? And the best thing Kevin could do is ignore it. He addressed it here and everything. But, you know, I'm I'm a fan of Mike. I'm a fa fan of Kevin. I got respect for him for different reasons. But going against one of your boys, especially if you know that's your man's. First off, you gotta understand what a man's is in them is. A man's is in them is from one person to twelve people. Usually when your mans get to a level of 12, somebody's going to be incarcerated. So it's always good mm -hmm. to keep your mans to one. But if that's who you say <laughs> is your, your mans, then you got to be loyal to that. You can't go against them. And, and then also, it's a question. It's like maybe you had ulterior motive and it was something right. underlined for years and now this is yes. coming out. Yes, right. and you saw that after Mike, after Kev came here and Mike posted about um, you fooled America for so long, you unfunny motherfucker. Like that ain't got nothing to do with it. That ain't got that. nothing to do with it. But guess who would love to be unfunny and stand on the bank account that Kevin Hart had? You could tone my funny down <laughs> and make me an average mother. Just so people don't understand, funny is one thing. Are you saying but, Kev is average? That, is that, no, that, is that no, that's not, no, that's what I'm He's saying. He's talking about what Michael Blackson said about him. You know what, what I'm saying? saying? I think he said Kev was average. No, no, no. I said said average. No, Kev is a funny dude and he, and he makes it work. He And he makes his style what? of comedy. He makes his style. You're not gonna do it to me, <laughs> Joe. You, no, you, but look, Stay you see him. He still trying to talk to me and look at me with a fine face. You see him <laughs> trying to put some dimples on. He was like, ha, ha. It's, it's not you gonna work. With your shoulder. Like, I respect. I, I respect both of them. And at the end of the day, for you to be able to create a lifestyle that's suitable and you can employ motherfuckers and you can hire motherfuckers more than off of off of comedy, mm -hmm. you know, my hat's off to both of them. Right. Now, how's our best friend, Austin? Austin is great. Austin just turned uh, two, August 25th. Wow. Oh, his son, his yeah. son slid in my DMs. That's dirty. That's dirty. <laughs> like father, like son? He ain't saying you no know, cucumbers or nothing. No, no, no eggplants, did he? He's so cute. He put a little cute 
Happy birthday on my birthday. Little yeah, that's my that's that's my heart. That's the first person I ever heard say to me, I'm funnier than you. And I didn't <clears> get <throat> mad at him. Wow. My son told me, he said, I'm funnier than you. I'm like, okay, you're the only person who can get away with that. that. Does he understand comedy yet? Yeah, he understands. I've okay. already, I started training him on getting comedic timing. Like, I got him a little microphone, a little, little karaoke speaker, and every time he grabs the speaker, I just start, anytime he says something, I just start laughing. So he knows what it feels like when you have the mic in your hand and people start laughing. I'm not pushing him to be a comedian, but he's going to have to be funny in whatever he does. If he's a doctor, he's got to be a funny doctor. If he's a lawyer, he's got to be a funny mm -hmm. lawyer. But, you know, that's my life. So I, I don't not encourage him to go into my field, but I at least want him to know what I do. And how He it believes makes in feel. Santa, I see. Huh? He believes in Santa. I know I dealt, I, well, right now, but as soon as he get old enough to understand who pays for the gifts, I'm ruining for Santa. <laughs> Why you don't tell him now? He's not going to understand it now. My son's so disrespectful about Christmas. I was so happy to open gifts with him this year. I was like, you ready to open gifts? He looked at me, he said, I want a bubble bath. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah. He like, but like, he's he's flying. He's not into it yet. No, not into it he's yet. Living that in fact, life. he ripped all his gifts over, and a half hour later, he had a temper tantrum, like, I don't give a fuck about that Christmas shit. You know what I'm saying? Where my chicken McNuggets right now? Now, what are you like doing it? a Netflix special? You see Cat Williams has his coming. Um, I, You can't never call it. I've been talking. Um, Me and Chappelle have been having a conversation. He's, I think the next step of things that he do is the executive producer, being an executive producer. And we've talked about the possibility of him being an executive producer for my next special. Mm -hmm. um, he, you know, he just did those two specials, the last two specials, yes, um, New Year's. Equanimity and um, Bird Eye Redemption. And like the, his opening acts, uh, myself, uh, Chris Spencer, Mo Amber, Ashley Barnhill, and Cypher Sounds, we also recorded in that same room. We did 15 minute specials. I don't know if it's gonna come to light, but it's in the can to do that. It would be a nice introduction. You need an the, hour, man. I called I, you, I called Donnell and told him that. Did I not? I said, Donnell, yeah. I just want you to know I think that you are on another level right now. You need a special, man. It's gonna happen. I don't I don't rush it. Like my 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 timeline is this spring to gear up for it. But I don't rush it. Everything happens for a reason. You 63, do. Donnell. No, he's not. No. No, you no. You gonna leave my friend Donnell no, 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 alone. I'm on no. Donnell's side today. I'm I don't trust you, Bill. I'm trying. I don't, don't trust, trust you to be on my don't side. Don't trust him. This is girl, only Wait, girl to give me relationship me. advice and allow me to get on a scooter drunk and drive into the city. <laughs> 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 She's like, you gonna be okay, Donna? Here, take another rum punch and get on your motorcycle and bounce. A lot of people really enjoy my birthday. Shout out to you too, man. Oh, you so disrespectful. But people, respect. but y'all gonna have to tell people everywhere I go. This show is so big. Everywhere I go, they be like, yo, they don't say I've seen you on Chappelle show or anything anymore they be like I see you in the breakfast club and then the next day they say yo I thought you said they was your friend son <laughs> I thought they was friend why they disrespect you but so you much but you've grown I mean we all know you did Chappelle show but you've grown like you're not yeah. just you're not Ashy Larry from Chappelle show you Donnell Rollins you nah but this is the weather where I am Ashy Larry this is, this is the weather <laughs> yeah. yeah. and it's so funny I've been people always say I've been Ashy and when we were doing Chappelle show Dave asked me what was I going to do to prepare for the role of Ash Hiller? I said, I'm just going to take a shower and wait 15 minutes. I'll be the <laughs> Ashes person on set. And that's where the birth of Ash Hiller. I do want to say, uh, you say not, Dave's going to get into EP, and is he going to get into like TV and movies or just I can't, I can't call it, but I just, I just feel like that he has an itch to let the world know all the other things he could contribute to the business other than just stand up. And He's just creating stand. more. It would be. Like, I've seen him. Like, you, what you don't see is, like, you don't see, like, what he does behind the scenes. You don't see like the people that, that he know, that he connect. That's what all the executive producers about, bringing the right people together. And I encourage him all the time. I was like, yo, people gotta see the other side of you because that's, that, that'll be the next step. He seems like he speaks a lot of things into fruition though. Like he don't mind like throwing things against the I will wall. say this is what he says about you all the time. And I was like, and I always tell him, why you wanna hear that Charlemagne shit no more? Every time I see him and your name comes up, he says that Charlemagne's gonna be a billionaire. Mm. He said, it's something about that dude. I could just feel it. You know, he's going to be a billionaire. I was setting you and up And I was saying to myself, when the last time you looked at Envy's page, nigga? <laughs> he's already a billionaire. <laughs> Stupid ass. Yo, I had, to, I had to unfollow this nigga. His life was so perfect. <laughs> he never said I was handsome, though. Nah, nobody ever said that. <laughs> the only person I would take that from is your mom, son. Oh, no, your, bro <laughs> yeah. your brother. No, your brother, your wife, or your kid. No, your, your brother, brother thought I was handsome. No, he didn't think you say. Come on, never, Donnell. He ain't never say handsome. He said cute. Your brother wanted a warm t-shirt. He said cute, son. He ain't never say handsome, son. Yeah, so this is something about him when he was... What? Flawed. No, he just said you know, that he said, when he was flawed, there was something about him, I guess, to your brother. Like he liked his yeah, he was just, flawed I look. I don't know what it was. I was <laughs> upset about it. I was like, you can't find nobody else to like but then this dude. But you know, that's I, what it I, is. I, anybody that thought I was handsome before 2012, I hold, I hold a dear place in my heart.
Yeah, you well, you can love all the liars you want. <laughs> you those anybody that was lying to me wasn't the true fan. I love y'all for lying to me, son. Yeah, what do you think about I'm... the monkey, the uh, the, the oh. black brother from H and M with the coolest monkey in the jungle hoodie on? I thought it was unfortunate, but it lended for a lot of funny opportunities. Like I posted some people got because I posted a picture of Michael Blackson. I did. I saw and, that. And, 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 you know, <laughs> <laughs> I said, "What did I say? The darkest monkey in the village." Darkest monkey in the village. And everybody said, like, "I can't believe y'all." I, I was like. Michael Blackson does the most self-deprecating humor mm -hmm. ever. If anybody's going to be mad about making a joke about being dark and all that shit, it'd never be Mike Blackson. Right. right. I think that that's, I think it was unfortunate, but we like I just want us to get to a point where we don't that yeah. Dog yeah. monkey in the jungle. Yo, and, and the thing about it, about three hundred thousand people like that. George, you so. know what's so stupid about Donnell's Instagram? What? He puts the same hashtag and it makes me laugh every time. Too soon. Yo, too soon. <laughs> that's gonna be name of that's gonna be no, name of my TV show. Too and you know soon. what's really funny is that he'll send us stuff in a text message that's really inappropriate. And so always tell people you, if you think the two soon that make it are bad, you should see the ones that don't make it. Oh my goodness! Because I had a DJ Envy All joint. Right. Yo, I had a DJ All Envy right. joint. I had an Envy joint, and I was like, <laughs> I, 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 I always send an ad for her approval first, right? Yo, you and said I was this like, telling me what the, the dildo joint. Yeah. Yeah. But you I should have put hashtag too big. No, I wouldn't do that. I would. <laughs> I, I consider y'all to be my family, so I would never do anything. That's the same thing. Like I'm gonna send you one to post. You should post this one. Oh boy, that's that's so disrespectful. That's disrespectful. It's gone too far. But people people get upset. Too far. Like the H and M. People get upset and they want to protest. But like, what's the what's the next step? What are we gonna to do to really affect some change in the way people think? Right. How did you how did you feel uh when the transgender community came at uh Dave over his jokes? I think that there's certain communities that are super sensitive. I first off, you gotta understand most black folks, we gotta take our phobias one at a time. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We gotta deal with homophobia, you get past that. You gotta you can't just get through all your phobias at one time. Mm -hmm. I think and, and with with anything, and, and this is something with comedy, like everybody is overly sensitive about everything. A stand-up comic's uh, thoughts aren't supposed to be parallel with your thoughts. You go in to see somebody to listen to their po point of view and they add some humor to it. Mm -hmm. So if you go to a comedy club, you expect, well, I don't appreciate this, I didn't want him to say that. First off, look at the definition of a comedian. And then Google that person, you can tell the type of, um, content you're gonna get when you get there. I just think that certain communities are overly, overly sensitive. And we get to a point now, like, you won't be able to tell a joke without, once as a comedian, when you start like coming up with a joke and you're like, I wonder what they're gonna think if this person is gonna be offended, then you don't have your authentic voice anymore. It's just mm. gotta be funny. You know what I'm saying? It's my gotta be my funny. My favorite jokes are ones that I feel bad that I laughed at. Like the too soon thing. Like, yeah. The one I thing feel about, bad that I think something's funny, but if it's just funny, it's funny. But then you feel like, damn, I shouldn't have laughed at that. But that's the whole thing. When anytime I put too soon on something, people always say too soon. The next thing you do, they do the funny emoji. You know what I'm saying? It's something funny about it. I think it's something funny about everything. I do think that society is overly sensitive right now, and it's going to take away from what <clears> real <throat> true stand-up comedy is. And true, true stand-up comedy is somebody taking something and put a humorous spin and it's their point of view and the way they look at things. And once you start taking away that, then everybody's going to be like cookie cutter. Everybody's going to sound the same. And and it shouldn't, the comedy shouldn't be like that. You just got to hold on to your true authentic voice and as long as nobody's being malicious and truly saying exactly. things that are trying to hurt people, let them go. And that's what, and that's, and that's, what, that's the beauty of, if you, if, if you saw all the Chappelle special, like he don't hate anything. This is like, this, this is my thought process. This is what I think funny. And I can't let you back me down for that. Right. And the minute you start, like people say, don't say this or don't say that, and you apologize, you again, you not going to be authentic comic, and people not going to want to come see you no more. You're going to be corny. Well, we thank you for coming up uh, here with Dave Who said it was time year. to go? So. No, no, I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, I thought he was about to oh, end it. Oh, yeah, that was the intro. Who said it was time to go? No, no, no. no I know it was going to be so. Last, I'm lucky I got 10 minutes. Last year you came up here with Dave. We thank you for that. Uh, people no, you didn't thank me for that. The first thing you said is, what the hell are you doing up here, son? And, yo, it didn't, and I was excited because out of all the uh, out of all the Breakfast Club, it ranked in a, it was a number five for your for your poll for, for the interviews yes. for the year, which yeah, is cool. Yeah, yeah. That was a good time. Not because of you, Did we put though. Donnell on huh? it, too? It didn't matter. I, didn't come, I came up here because my dude wanted me to come up here. And I've, I've said that. Dave was like, you know, I haven't done radio in a while, blah, 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 and that. And he know I have a little background in radio. And I, I just came as, like, just to come to support my mans. And it, and it worked out. All right, Donnell. No, gosh. no, you know, he's still mad. So I'm just mad, mad son. Okay. All right. No, I'm not mad. I'm, not, I'm mad. I'm just saying, right. what more I do want... you want from me? <laughs> I just want my baby! <laughs> Alright, well, Donnell.
Donnell, we appreciate Donnell? you for joining us, Donnell. No, you so disrespectful. Thank you for joining us, Donnell. It was always a great time. You need Anything a else more? you want to get I don't got a gram. No. I make funny moves. And you ain't even looking at my video I made. You ain't watching. What it? you mean? I didn't watch the video. Oh, it was corny. You, the I don't like before that yellow. I don't like this watch saying you shit. You I'm too gonna critical, be honest, so. no, I'm going to tell you. No, I don't want you to be honest. Thank y'all. This is a break. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to tell you why. Be honest. Donnell, just be mad late. I know. You know what? You know what? I will. I will what say you that. Mean, he just did a act yesterday. Just yeah, like two no, like a week yesterday. ago, a week or two a ago. Week ago. No, no. Two. Now you got to do the hashtag too late. Yeah, too, too late, late, too late. late. <laughs> no, I will say. No, no. And the reason why I did that, you're, you're absolutely right. And when I when I did, I was like, maybe it's not the time, but it was just something. And it was just. And the reason why I did it because it's so many. And I'm not knocking the people to get uh, successful social media, whatever. And I always say this: be have all the followers you want and everything, but don't give up on the craft of stand up. You know what I'm saying? Just because people watching you do your videos when you shuck and jive and all that type of stuff, yeah, yeah. it has nothing to do with you being a great stand-up comic. And then in your bio, we put stand-up comic, but you can't do more than five minutes on stage, and you can't back it up. And that's why I said I don't got a gram. I make funny moves. It wasn't like a dig what? of those guys, but it was just like this. Yo, you got people that's good on the gram, but you got people that's good doing stand-up that's going to rip on stage when you say But what that got to do with you using Damn, songs that are late, awesome. though? You like that, Lucia? <laughs> Yeah, because I didn't get inspired to do it. it was too late, son. You're right. I knew I was like I was like he's gonna be like this. Yeah, this has been cool five months ago before everybody knew you know all what? the words to the song. And I keep trying to use your man on the street stuff up here, but they won't let it go. They're like, I don't know. Wow, I, I, really? I don't you, you, know. I'd be like, I think it's funny. I thought it was funny. Yeah, yeah, right, let's he, do don't, it. he don't like it though. So yeah, am right, I getting offered a job? That. <laughs> Am I getting offered a job? Right? Everybody has to agree I've been on it. I'm trying to pitch that. So wait, 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 I wait, wait. To everybody has to vote. agree on Donnell Rawl as being the man on the street for yes. the Breakfast Club. Right. Yes. And who's everybody? Is, is are you I, everybody? I, I'm everybody. Is that a yay or a no? I don't know. He said he didn't like some of them. I didn't say that. What? Yeah, no, no, no. The question he is, said she don't think you'd be reliable. That's what you said. I know. He just made that up. I I pitched it to Revolt that we should have him do little um, snippets, right. you know, and they could play throughout. Yeah. So I that's agree. a that's a that's a yes. Yeah, yeah. That's a yes. Yeah, but revolt. What's your fine ass? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Donnell, oh, flattery will get you everywhere. <laughs> yes, Donnell. Yes, yes. Yo, he put up he put up two hands after that, son. <laughs> <laughs> he said, yeah, but yeah, 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 you got it. <laughs> yeah, I want to do it. I I I I I haven't. I did radio years ago. I missed doing radio. You guys, and not that you guys need me or whatever, but I like listen to the show. Y'all already doing the shit. You like I was, family. Like, yeah, yeah. Other family. than the fact that you went to another station, but other than that, you cool with it. I got you came from another book. station. And you too. <laughs> I didn't say nothing about that. <laughs> and him too. Yo, and yeah, everybody. I got you in my book. Word. And are I say, gonna, my friend, are you gonna sign Donnell Riley. Are you going to sign that for my yes. brother? Yes, I will. Thank you. He well, was, Donnell's going to be at Caroline's. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm gonna say, yes. all right, I'm signing it right now. I'm gonna say peace, babe. I'm gonna go to the Friday show. Hey. Okay. <laughs> and I'm bringing a, a listener that listens, just a, a random listener, her fiance, just just because it was free. No, no, not because it's free. Because I'm taking them to dinner too, just because they listen and they love the show. And Dana has an album out right now on um, iTunes. How I spell his name? Chucky. <laughs> Chucky. I spell Chucky. Nigga? Chucky. Where it's Tell him official. you love him like you said to Jason Mitchell. <laughs> Charlamagne's smiling. So look at Charlamagne's face. Yeah, now you, you got his cute face on there. So. All right. Well, down right. Well, Donnell Rollins, Did we you write a letter show? No, us. I just put, I put love, babe. Chucky, Chucky. Ah, quack, quack. <laughs> I appreciate it. All jokes aside. <laughs> <laughs> All jokes aside, as I said at the beginning of the show, say hey, poop, money, party, sale. Got nothing luck but love for the Breakfast Club. I appreciate y'all. And y'all keep killing it because y'all are really fucking the game up. Thank you, sir. That lotion worked well on you. It did. I like that. I want more of that. Thank you. Well, it's the Breakfast Club. Donna <laughs> Rollins.